Yeah, it's just like being meditative. Like you can't be meditative. Like I tried this for a year. I tried to be present. I tried to be meditative. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and 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 it's what remains when there's nothing else. It's not something that you seek directly. That's it's, right. It's what rem- it, it's what remains when you're kind of not interested in anything else. That's uh, right. Then you're meditative by default, and it's effortless right. as opposed to when you're trying for it. So even to the extent that I do meditation, what I found works for me is I sit down. And for me, a lot of times meditations are just my mind eating me alive. It's coming at me with all the things that are unresolved. And then as I go through them one by one, I resolve them. Then for a little bit of time, my mind is clear because I've resolved the things that it wanted to fight about. (laughs) And that's, you know, there I get maybe a taste of meditation. But here's Uh, my question to you. Not something I can seek directly. Yeah. You you started that statement with what works for me. Okay. So, so when you, when you go and you try to open a, a door, with a you you have a a um a bunch of keys and you take one of the keys and that key doesn't work so that means what does it mean it didn't work that means the door wasn't unlocked that's what that means and then another key does work what does it what do we mean by work well that means it worked because it unlocked the door so then there was there was a direct intention there um the the arbitrator being did the door unlock or did it not so mm-hmm. the question here is when you started the meditation uh, when you started the explanation with what works for me? What is the what is the arbitrator? What works to do what? What is the what is the goal? The the I mean the goal. So yeah, maybe this is uh, I'm walking into a trap here, but I don't care. You don't judge. <laughs> uh, the the goal is to have a clear mind, <laughs> right? Okay. Which which I which, yeah. And, and uh, is it a goal unto itself? Uh, actually, why not? Because when I have a clear mind. What ends up with freedom, bliss, joy, peace, equanimity, whatever you call it, it's a good feeling. It just means you're in the moment. You're not worried about anything. You're freed from anxiety. You're freed from the future, totally. uh, which is which is my demon. So that that's to me is useful. The problem okay. with meditation is that it's not permanent, right? Yes. Uh, yes. But what it what it does give me, it gives me an hour a day by myself to work through my thoughts. Uh, yes. And it gives me an hour a day of it as an introvert, you know, when I'm surrounded by kids and family and work and media and entertainment and all the distractions of modern society, it gives me an hour to just introspect. Um, so I don't think there's any such thing as a good or a bad time spent alone with your eyes closed, right? Whether it's blissful and joyous and peaceful, whether it's meditative or whether it's just your mind's eating you alive and you're battling with it, trying to figure things out. As long as you're engaging in self-examination, it's all it's all it's all good. So, so this is what I'll say to that. There's no right or wrong. There's no you should meditate or you shouldn't meditate. There, there's no rules here, okay? Um, I'm, I approach things from the standpoint of understanding, you know. Uh, so what I will say is this. What, to me, what meditation is, is, is a, an exercise in management, okay? It is that one gets too stressful or whatever it is, therefore he needs an hour separate from that stress and to you know to sort of to cleanse and to take a break and to have so meditation basically is a form of uh, is, a, is a pleasure chase okay now uh, part and parcel with what i just said i have to say things so often in the same breath because i know that people's minds are going to go to their preformed pathways and that preformed pathway is going to be so subtle that they're not even going to recognize it which is that as soon as i said that it's pleasure chasing, the feeling is going to be, well, oh, it's wrong to pleasure chase. No, it isn't. Forget wrong and right. Let's let's talk about this for a second. If you had only two years to live or one year to live, so what I would say is that nobody would be managing anything. People would seek cures. Right. The reason that the reason that we manage things is because we know and we feel, um, rightly or wrongly, correctly or incorrectly, that we're going to be here for a long time. And since we are then I can sort of use the scapegoat and sort of take that way and sort of go manage things and then jump back into the ocean of of the momentum of everyday existence. Whereas to me, and once again, it's a DNA thing. What I am excited, what, 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 what really moves me is the idea of permanence. What really moves me is like, I don't want to feel good through meditation. I have no interest in wanting to feel good. And the reason I don't, is because I know, like you said, I know it's I'm going to have to do it again, and I want to do it again. That isn't what that isn't what drives me. What drives me is the permanent state. So I I, I agree with that. I mean, to the extent like if if meditation is getting 
me closer to unraveling parts of my identity and self that don't make sense. If it's bringing me understanding and time with myself that helps me see deeper, then it's useful. If it's yes. just getting back at the same point every day for an hour a day, it's useless. Then I yes. might as well just go exercise and improve my body. That's right. So, that's, yeah. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it isn't me telling you that that's the way to do it. I'm just no, no, no. I, saying no, I, we, I get all, it. We all yeah. chase yeah. a, I think, you know, a state in which I don't want to have to leave here again and do it again and again and right. again. You know, right. that that doesn't interest me. It's kind of kind of like I've never gotten excited by hole in once because I know that it's largely luck. Now, if you do it twice in a row, I'm interested because now I know that you have a system. OK, if you have a system, I'm interested now. Because you figured something out that nobody else knows. Now my ears are perked. Now I'm all in. I'm listening. I, I would say that the interesting part for meditation for me is it's an hour a day where I just have to sit with myself and I have to work through my problems <clears throat> and I have to self-examine. And it's something that I think you do with every waking hour. <laughs> so I think for right. you, it's not that useful. You are constantly engaged in self-examination, constantly. Uh, most human beings are engaged in no self-examination because they're constantly distracting themselves from exactly that thing. They're distracting themselves from the self because the moment they focus on self-examination, there's a lifetime's worth of things to examine that come bubbling up and eat them alive. So they run away from it. So for me, having an hour a day, Having done it now for a few months, I've sort of caught up. I've examined large parts of myself mm -hmm. that have right. that have faded into the background. And so now what remains when I sit is peace. But then when I get up, I am disturbed again. And I'm disturbed because the real life is much more active, emotionally active, much more. And I'm much more reactive to, to normal life than I am when I'm just sitting down with my eyes closed. So now the challenge is how do I take this level of understanding even further, examine further and start unraveling the things that make me reactive in everyday life, right. not just in meditation.